Today we'll be revisiting the mid-1980s to discuss the Nikon N2020 or the F501 as it was known in the rest of the world. Nikon's autofocus answer to the Minolta Maxim. So stay tuned. To say that Minolta set the photography world on its ear with the release of the Maxim 7000 is an understatement. And as I brought up before on the channel, autofocus technology had been around for several years prior to the release of Maxim. But no manufacturer seemed to know what to do with it. Was it something that the pros wanted? Or was it something that would feature better on entry-level cameras? Nikon initially tried it on a pro body, the Nikon F3AF. Canon tried it on their entry-level T80, and neither really took off. But Minolta somehow caught lightning in a bottle with the Maxim 7000. It was a huge hit that sat somewhere in the middle between entry-level and pro, and they had an entire system of accessories and lenses to back it up. The first significant answer to the Maxim was from Nikon in 1986, the N2020, or, to the rest of the world, the F501. So how does it stack up against the Minolta? Well, let's dig in and find out. If we compare the two cameras, there's one thing that you'll notice almost immediately. The Minolta is the design of the future. The Nikon design calls back a more traditional design. The Nikon uses familiar dials and cranks, where the Minolta uses buttons and LCD panels. And looking at the lenses, you can also see how Nikon kept the traditional aperture selection ring where the Minolta lenses have none. And this is a very important distinction between the two systems. Minolta chose to create an entirely new lens mount for the Maxim and had a very nice line of lenses to accompany it. Nikon, however, was still playing by their mantra of non-obsolescence. It was important for them to not alienate long-term users, many of which were professionals, by creating a new lens mount that would be incompatible with decades worth of excellent Nikon glass. So their approach was to develop an autofocus camera system that would still be able to mount and use most of the many, many Nikon lenses already out there. Whether this was the best strategy for the long run can be debated. But, as someone who owns some nice Nikon manual focus lenses, it is very nice to be able to use those lenses on many of their autofocus bodies. It's very nice not to be required to invest in two different systems. Now, let's look at the camera. On the right shoulder, you'll see the shutter speed dial right where you would expect it. Speeds are from 1 to 1 2,000th of a second plus B. The shutter is a vertical travel type and will synchronize with flash at 1 125th of a second. The shutter release is also right there and it's surrounded by the film advanced mode collar, which by pulling up and rotating lets you choose locked, single, or continuous drive modes. The camera has a built-in motor drive and is capable of 2.5 frames per second. So right behind that is a switch that lets you turn off the audible warning beeps if you choose. And I do choose that. Next to that is the frame counter window. And on the other side of the warning on-off switch is the film rewind button. It's interesting to note that even though the camera has a built-in motor drive, film rewinding isn't automatic. That still has to be done manually by pressing the rewind button while sliding a small switch on the back to the right. This will disengage the drive gears and allows you to rewind the film like you would on nearly any other manual focus camera by using the film rewind crank over on the left shoulder of the camera. Underneath the film rewind crank, which also doubles as the back latch of course, is the film speed setting dial. You have a choice of setting film speeds manually or by DX coding. If you choose to use the DX system, you'll need to rotate the film speed dial clockwise all the way until DX shows in the window. The range of speeds in DX mode is 25 to 5000 ISO and 12 to 3200 ISO if manually selected. This is also where you'd set any exposure compensation. Press the button to disengage the lock and set it to anywhere within plus or minus two stops. Let's go back over to the shutter speed dial for just a minute. Besides setting the shutter speed, this is also where you choose an auto exposure mode as well. And here you have a choice of four. Yeah, A will give you aperture priority, and you have three different program modes. Program dual, regular program, and program high. Program high chooses faster shutter speeds and wider apertures that you'd need when shooting action. 
Dual program will choose between regular program and program high depending on the focal length of the lens you have mounted. Switching between the auto modes will require you to press the silver button beside the dial to unlock it. Looking at the front of the camera, beside the lens mount below the shutter release are three buttons. A convex button for AE lock, a concave button for AF lock, and a red recessed button as a self timer. On the other side of the lens mount, you have the silver lens release button, and below it is the focusing mode selection switch where your choices are manual, continuous, and single. And in the top corner, you have a special remote release socket since the shutter release doesn't accept the typical cable release. The bottom plate of the camera is pretty bare. Loosening the screw will give you access to the battery compartment, which requires four AAA batteries, or you can use four AA batteries with the optional MB3 bottom plate. And because of the way the battery compartment is designed, the tripod socket is way over to the side. Finally, on the back of the camera on the right is the film advance indicator. Under the window is a disc with blue and black stripes that rotates to signal that film advance is working. Taking a look inside the viewfinder, you'll see it's pretty uncluttered. Over to the right, you'll have your shutter speeds, and unfortunately, the f-stops aren't visible in the viewfinder. And here is the autofocus area. At the bottom, you have your autofocus confirmation LEDs that will double as an electronic rangefinder if you're using manual focus lenses. As far as exposure goes, when in manual mode, if the shutter speed f-stop combination is correct, the shutter speed will be steadily illuminated over on the right. If the exposure is incorrect, your chosen shutter speed will illuminate steady, but the correct shutter speed will flash. If you're underexposed, the shutter speed and bottom arrow will flash. If you're overexposed, the shutter speed and top arrow will flash. Now let's take a look at how the focus assist LEDs work. The middle green LED will light up if the focus is confirmed. If the camera is front focused in relation to the AF area brackets, the left red arrow will illuminate. If the camera is back focused in relation to the AF area brackets, the right red arrow will light up. If focus can't be achieved at all, for reasons such as being outside the minimum focusing distance of a lens, the red X will illuminate. And while we're talking about focusing, how good a job does this camera do? In single shot mode, it does as good as the Maxim Minolta for sure, but how does it compare when in continuous mode? As you saw in the Maxim 7000 video, I devised a method of testing continuous autofocus. Basically, I put the camera on a slider and I move it toward a lens testing target while keeping the shutter pressed and continuous drive selected. Then I can examine the negatives and determine how well the camera kept up. If you'd like to see that in action, go check out the Minolta 7000 episode. And how did the N2020 compare? Well, out of 24 frames, none were so soft that they'd be unacceptable. 19 of them were very sharp, and the rest were also in focus, just a bit softer than the others. So, how does this thing shoot? Well, I filmed this next part all the way back in early spring when I was first getting my thoughts together on what this channel would be like, and I thought about filming something new for this section, but during the original shoot, I encountered an issue that I thought needed to be included. I mean, with all these cameras and shoots, I want to include the bad just as much as the good, you know. Things happen, and I think it's just as well to have it out there for all to see. Maybe it's a good learning experience? Anyway, take a look and see what you think. All right, so I believe we have found my first subject. I really like this one in the front. Um, yeah, so let's get the camera out. So what I've got here, I've got the in 2020 and right now i've got the 50 millimeter 1.8 on it uh, i also only have two autofocus lenses for nikon i have the 51.8 and then i have a 70 to 200 tokina uh, 2.8 the good thing about the nikon though is that i can use any lenses from the late 60s to the to, until the autofocus period came on with this camera so I've got several manual focus lenses in there too, and I'll be using as well. All right, well, this thing is noisy. This winder is nice and loud. You can't be sneaky with this camera. Uh, right now I'm shooting in aperture priority. Got it set to 2.8. Uh, 
All right, let's see what else we can find. It's nice, some architectural shots up here. I like the way the shadows are interacting with that facade there. So right now, we got part of it in shade. The sun's coming in at a nice angle. Let's get a few shots of this. You can probably hear how loud this shutter and winder is. My mic's right on it. So I'm still shooting on aperture priority mode and I changed that to F8 at that point. I'll switch to manual mode here in a little bit, but I really wanted to make sure this, you know, give the metering system a good checkout. So I might leave it on aperture priority all day. I can use program mode also with this particular lens that I've got. All right, actually, before I move on, I'm gonna put on a longer lens. I'm gonna do the 70 to 200, 28, uh, just to get a nice detail shot of the same spot. All right, so I've got the 70 to 200, 28 here. I have the aperture set on F11. That's giving me about a 500th of a second shutter speed. All right, let's move on. So the sun's really nice today. Got some nice angled shadows coming in. Uh, I like this corner over there. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, and just get some architecture there with the shadows. shooting on aperture priority still, and that was at F11. So it's a bit overexposed on the GoPro here, but we've got these nice buildings that are directing our attention down to that domed building and the bright sun in the background. So I wanna make that my subject. This will be interesting for uh, just to see how the aperture priority and the auto exposure works on this camera. I think I'll shoot some manual too, just to be safe, because this is a nice shot. I am going to put on a wide angle lens. I think the widest that I have though is 24. That might be too wide. Um, I'll have to look and see. So I've got the 24. It's a 24 2.8, but it is an old Vivitar version, uh, Nikon F mount. Uh, but I can still use this camera in aperture priority mode. So we're gonna do a few of that, and then I might change it to manual just to see, just to make sure I get this shot okay. And the other good thing about it is that I have focus confirmation in the viewfinder. So even though it's a manual focus lens, it's telling me, hey, you're getting focused. That green light lights up, nice. All right, I wanna do a few in manual just to be safe. I'll see what I can get with the one five hundredth of a second. Do a couple of verticals out of this too. Now let's switch back to aperture priority for a couple. All right, maybe those turned out. Before I leave, I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the telephoto back on there. Maybe even use the 300 4.5 on this. Yeah, let's try the 300 first. And this is not an autofocus lens. This is an older AI version. Yeah. All right, let's do F11. Wait, well, let's see. First, I need to make sure that, all right, since I'm shooting with this 300, I'm gonna put my shutter speed on one 500th of a second. And match it up manually in the in the viewfinder. It says I may be a little overexposed at one five hundredth of a second, so let's put it on one one thousand. It's very difficult to hold this thing still. that 
did the 7200 on it as well. This was very tight. I was basically just getting the dome of this building. So they're gonna shoot it one one thousandth of a second. Nice billet. All right, let's move on to the next. I am on exposure 26 of a 36 exposure roll. Earlier, I wasn't sure that the film had wound when I loaded it in the camera. I had the feeling that it did not catch on the take-up spool. So I opened the back, and it was, yeah, it was on the spool. So I ruined about five or six shots right there, but maybe the camera won't rip it off of the spool when it gets to the end. If that happens, well, our day will be over, and I will have to take out the film in a dark bag, which I don't have with me. So let's, let's hope that doesn't happen. I uh, just reached the end of this roll. The red light blinked to tell me that it was empty. So I am going to rewind and put a new roll in. And the little window on the back is rotating. So it's telling me that my film has caught, it's rewinding. And I believe that is it. All right, let's get a new reel in. Well, bad news. I was trying to get the film canister out of the camera and I did something that I've never done in my life. While I was fiddling with the film, I accidentally touched the shutter blades, which you're not supposed to touch the shutter, completely by accident, and bent them. So now, hopefully I have not just bricked this camera, but the shutter blades are not not attractive at this moment so um that's going to be all for today we'll take a look at what's come out and maybe i'll be able to fix this camera because i have enjoyed it the autofocus is slow and loud but being that it is that way, you can certainly tell when it's locked on to something. It gives me confidence that the subject is in focus. I mean, sometimes the quieter lenses, the quieter autofocus, like the Canon USM or the, the modern ones, you know, they focus without any noise. And yeah, I'm sure it's just me, but the fact that I can hear this loud motor going and it stops gives me an extra little boost of confidence that what I've got is in focus. Anyway, it's a nice little camera and hopefully I will be able to revive it because uh, it would be a shame to have screwed this up. This is why I can't have nice things. Yep, I jabbed it with my finger completely by accident, and now I don't know this thing may be. Ah, I don't know. I'm going to mess with it just a little bit before I leave. It's bugging me. Ah, man, what a way. Man, I hate this. But there you have it. We can all be an idiot. Today was my day. All right. Well, I'm lucky. I fixed that with a set of car keys. The top blade was just bent a little and once I popped that top blade flat, it all went back together. And I have tripped the shutter a few times and it works. So maybe, whew. all right, be a lesson. Don't touch the shutter. The camera manuals always tell you, don't touch the shutter. This is why, don't mess with it. So I just realized what time it was, so I'm gonna have to cut this photo walk short, even though I did fix the blades. At least I'm feeling good about that. Uh, may pick this back up uh, in a couple of days. We'll add this to the video. Um, but I am headed 
home, because I gotta teach class tonight, and this is a two hour drive. We will meet back up shortly, and we'll look at these photos and talk about the camera a little bit more. All right. Well, that didn't go as I had planned, but I got really lucky that it didn't completely destroy the shutter blades, and I was just as surprised as anyone that they popped back into place. But I'm glad they did, because I was really starting to enjoy my time with the N2020, so I'd love to get myself another chance with it. One of the best things about this camera, I think, is the lens compatibility. I only have a few AF lenses for Nikon, and the ability to put that manual focus 300mm on there was super convenient. And the electronic rangefinder system let me know if I was in focus or not. So I'm happy that Nikon did continue on in their way of non-obsolescence and allow us to use these great old manual focus lenses on the new AF bodies. And that being the case, it can also work the other way. Any Nikon AF lens that has a physical aperture ring will work splendidly on the old manual focus bodies. It may not have the so-called rabbit ears to engage an old photomic meter prism, but it will mount and it will work. All in all, I kind of like the N2020 because it sits in a relatively unique space in Nikon camera history. It's an AF body, but it definitely has the squarish and hard-edged form factor and feels like a manual body with the dials and knobs and cranks. I like the way it feels. And what I haven't talked about at all is that the N2020 has a near twin. The N2000. Almost the exact same design, but without any autofocus. It's a manual focus body. And I think it illustrates Nikon's hope of making autofocus technology just another tool to add to already great cameras. Well, the N2020, they didn't come out with a space-age, high-tech looking camera. They just took what they already had and said, okay, let's put autofocus in there. No big deal. I started out this episode saying that the N2020 was Nikon's answer to the Minolta Maxim cameras. So I can't finish this up without comparing some of the specs. The Maxim offers an additional exposure mode, shutter priority, that the N2020 doesn't have. But the N2020 offers real continuous autofocus where the Maxim really didn't, and I think it performed better as a result. All in all, the N2020 feels vintage, especially nowadays. It's not sleek and smooth and ergonomic but it's a solid camera with great build and has the benefit of being able to mount a huge number of non-AF Nikon lenses. And to me, that makes it a really flexible system. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Be sure to hit the like button if so, and consider subscribing. I'd hate for you to miss any upcoming episodes. So until next time, load up your favorite film camera and get creative. I'll see ya.